This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about the Jacobi symbol, or possibly the Jacobi symbol if you're German. So um, recall that we have the Legendre symbol, denoted by A, B, which is equal to plus one if A is a square mod B, um, naught if A is congruent to zero, and minus one if A is not a square. That should be a non-zero square. And this is defined whenever B is prime. And it's quite often rather annoying to have B restricted be a prime number, as we will see later on in this lecture. So there are two extensions of the Legendre symbol. The first is called the Jacobi symbol. It's again denoted by AP. And this time it's defined for B, um, any, for B odd and positive. Um, and it's not defined like this. The, the, the Jacobi symbol is defined in the following way. Um, we define A, P1, P2 up to Pn. So here B is odd and positive, so it can be factorized as odd primes. And we just define this to be A P1 times A P2 all the way up to times A P N. Um, there's a further extension of the Jacobi symbol to the Kronecker symbol that I'll discuss in a later lecture. And the Kronecker symbol is defined for all integers. Um, a and B. Um, so what properties does the Jacobi symbol have? Well, um, quite a lot of its properties are the same as for the um, Legendre symbol. First of all, it's multiplicative in A, so A1, A2, B is equal to A1, B times A2, B. And this is very easy. It follows immediately from the same from the same property that the Legendre symbol has, plus some easy calculation. Secondly, it's multiplicative in B. So a b one b two is equal to a b one times a b two. And again, this is easy. So I'll just leave the proof as a straightforward exercise. Then the Legendre symbol. We know that minus one b is equal to plus one if b is congruent to 1 mod 4, and minus 1 if b is congruent to 3 mod 4. And the same holds true for the Jacobi symbol, and just as before, this is easy because um, this side is multiplicative in b, and you can easily check this side is multiplicative. Um, fourthly, we have um, 2b, sorry, 2b is equal to plus 1 if b is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 8 and minus 1 if b is congruent to plus or minus 3 mod 8. And just as before, this follows because both sides are multiplicative in b, so we'll again mark that down as easy. Um, next we've got periodicity, so a plus nb, b is equal to ab. And as before, it's, it's very easy. And then we've got the law of quadratic reciprocity, which says that a b is equal to minus 1 to the a minus 1 over 2 times b minus 1 over 2 b a, where a and b are odd, um, positive, and distinct. So they don't need to be distinct, but anyway. Um, and this needs a little bit more work to check that, that, that we will um, do on the next page. But just before doing that, I'll mention one further property that a b plus n a is not equal to a b in general. Um, for instance, we can see an example of this if we just take a um, um, 2 um, um, sorry, if, if we take 2b, then this does not have period 2 in b, it actually has period 8 in b. And in fact, in general, you find a, b plus 4na is equal to a, b. So, so it is periodic in b, but the period is, is 4a in general, not just a. Um, incidentally, the, the, um, 
it, it has period um, a b plus n a is equal to a b if a is congruent to zero or one mod four but not in general so periodicity in the denominator is a little bit trickier um anyway um the one thing we want to prove which isn't quite straightforward is this law of quadratic reciprocity um for the jacobi symbol and what we do is we notice that if a is equal to p1 p2 and so on and b is equal to q1 q2 whether pi and qi are odd primes then what's a b well this is just equal to the product over all i and j of pi qj um, by the multiplicity of the multiplicativity of the Jacobi symbol in A and B. And similarly, B A is just equal to the product over all I and J of Q J times P I. So let's multiply A B and B A together, and we get the product over all I J of P I Q J times Q J P I. And we know what these are by the usual law of quadratic reciprocity for the Legendre symbol. So this is just product over all i and j of minus 1 if p, i and q, j are both congruent to 3 mod 4. And we can see that this is just minus 1 to the m, n, where m is equal to the number of p, i that are 3 mod 4, and n is equal to the number of qj that's a 3 modulo 4. Um, however, if we look at uh, if we um, um, look at whether a is 3 mod 4, you see that um, m is even is equivalent to a being congruent to 1 mod 4, and similarly n being even is equivalent to um, b being congruent to 1 mod 4. And Conversely, if m is odd, then a is 3 mod 4 and vice versa. So this is just equal to minus 1 to the a minus 1 over 2 times b minus 1 over 2. Um, because um, th th this, this will be even if a is 1 mod 4 and odd if, if a is 3 mod 4. So we've got the law of quadratic reciprocity even for the Legendre symbol when, when the denominators don't have to be prime numbers. So we've had seven properties of the Legendre symbol that extend to the Jacobi symbol in a straightforward way. Um, we now have the big warning. There is one property that doesn't extend. For the Legendre symbol, um, we know that a, b is equal to plus one implies a is a square modulo b. This is where b is prime. And this still holds for the Jacobi symbol if b is a prime number, but is false in general. So, so let's just emphasize that for Jacobi, a, b equals plus 1 does not imply a is a square. I mean, a might be a square, but it's not necessarily a square. And if, if this is minus 1, then a is definitely not a square. But um, you can get cases like this. Suppose we take b to be a product of two primes, p and q. Then by the definition of the Jacobi symbol, this is equal to a p times a q. And now let's take this to be minus 1 and this to be minus 1. Then this side will be plus 1. And this means a is not a square mod p because of this. So it's not a square modulo pq because if it was a square modulo pq it would also be a square modulo p. And you can get an explicit example of this by taking a equals 2, um, p equals 3, q equals 5 say. So we have 2, 15 is equal to 2, 3 times 2, 5 which is equal to minus 1 times minus 1, which is equal to plus 1. So the Jacobi symbol 215 is plus 1, but 2 is definitely not a square modulo 15 and not even a square modulo 3. So this is the one thing you have to be um, 
careful about when using the Jacobi symbol. Um, incidentally, this is um, you may have been wondering why we didn't just define the Jacobi symbol to be um, one if a is a square. And the problem is that if we do that, it, it's not multiplicative in the denominator, which will be really annoying, as we will see in a moment. Um, so um, what's the advantage of this? Well, when we were computing the Legendre symbol for a, b, we want to change this to plus or minus b a whenever a is smaller than b and sort of continue. Well, um, this only works for a, a prime number um, when we're working with the Legendre symbol. And this is rather a nuisance because if a is not a prime number, say a is equal to p times q, we have to compute it by writing a b equals p b times q b. And then we can invert this as plus or minus b p times plus or minus um, b q. Um, and when we were computing Jacobi symbols in the previous lecture, we sort of had to do this. Um, you know, we, we, we sometimes had to factorize the numerator. And that, that's fine if a is small, but if a is really large, then factorizing a can be really rather difficult. Well, for the Jacobi symbol, we don't need to factorize a, so there's no need to factor the number a. And this makes it much easier to work out the Jacobi symbol really fast. So, so let's do an example. Suppose we want to compute, um, suppose we want to compute, say, minus 2,002,99991 as a Jacobi symbol. Um, so what we do is we first pull out all the factors of minus 1 and 2 in the numerator. So this is minus 1, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 1, times 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 1, um, times 1,001, 9, 9, 9, 9, 1. Now we work at what these are. Well, this is plus 1 because this is minus 1 um, mod 8, and this is equal to minus 1 because this is 3 modulo 4. So... Um, 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 and we can now invert this using the quadratic reciprocity law without bothering to factorize a thousand and one. So this just becomes minus nine 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 one a thousand and one. So the minus sign comes from that times that, and we don't get a minus sign by inverting because a thousand and one is one modulo four. And now we can divide 99991 by 1001 and we get minus 892001. And now um, we want to invert, but we can't because the numerator is even. So we, we take out all the factors of 2. So this is equal to minus, minus um, and now we've got two factors of 2. So we get 2 1001 squared times 223 1001. So that's 892 divided by 4. And um, whatever this is, we're squaring it, so we don't really care whether it's 1 or minus 1. And this becomes um, minus 1,001,223. So now we've inverted these, and 1,001 is 1 mod 4, so we don't get an extra sign. And this is equal to minus 109,223 where we've divided 1001 by 223. Um, and now we can invert using quadratic reciprocity again, and we get this as minus 223,109. Um, now we divide 223 by 109, and this is minus 109,5. And now we divide 109 by 5, and this becomes minus 4, Five, and now we pull out the factors of 2, so this is minus 2, 5 squared times 1, 5. And now 1, 5, well, we, 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 we've now got down to um, 1 is obviously a square modulo 5, so this is just minus 1. Um, so you notice this is really just Euclid's algorithm, um, except um, we take out factors of 2. Um, and we also keep track of signs. 
So Euclid's algorithm, we've got two numbers and we're constantly swapping them and dividing one by the other. And this is exactly what we were doing here, except that every now and then we need to take out an extra factor of two. And we also need to keep track of whenever we get an extra sign from swapping these two numbers. So whenever these are both three modulo four, we have to put an extra sign in. And it's just as fast as Euclid's algorithm. Um, incidentally, that, that, that there's an even more efficient form of this. So you remember there's um, a form of Euclid al Euclid's algorithm without division. Um, so you remember we could do Euclid's algorithm instead of dividing a number by another, we could just subtract and then take out factors of two. And you can do exactly the same thing for the Jacobi symbol. For instance, I'll just do 223109. And now let's try and do it without without any division. Suppose we've sort of forgotten how to do division or something. Um, so what we do, instead of dividing 223 by 109, we just subtract and we get 114,109. And then we take out the factor of 2. So, so we get, this is 2,109 times 57,109. And um, 2,109 is minus 1, so that's minus 57,109. And um, now these are both odd, so we can invert this. So it's minus 109.57, um, because these are, 109 is 1 mod 4, so we don't get a sign. And this is equal to minus 52.57, um, where now we've, instead of, we've just subtracted 57 from 109, and now we take out factors of 2, so this is equal to minus 257 squared times 13.57. And... Now that's going to be minus 5713 um, because um, we're just inverting these the by quadratic reciprocity. And now we don't divide 57 by 13, we just subtract. So we get minus 4413. And now we take out all factors of 2. So this is going to be minus 213 squared times 1113. Um, and now we can invert using quadratic reciprocity yet again, and we get minus 11, so minus 13, 11. And now we subtract 11 from 13, so this is minus 2, 11. And now um, we know what this is. It, 2, 11 is minus 1, so this is equal to plus 1. So you see, if we don't do division, it sometimes takes slightly more steps. Um, but in practice, it's a lot easier to do because we're just doing subtraction rather than division. And subtraction is a lot easier than division, especially if these were really big numbers. Um, you notice this algorithm works just fine if these are numbers with hundreds or thousands of digits in them. Um, and if they had hundreds or thousands of digits, we couldn't work out the Jacobi symbol by factorizing these numbers because that would be too difficult. So um, key point is the Jacobi or Legendre symbol, um, a b is really fast to calculate. I mean, really fast means even if a and b have thousands or even millions of digits, we can calculate it in, 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 in a very small amount of time. Um, so let's have an application of this. So um, remember we had a sort of primality test which says that if a to the um, p minus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod p, this implies p is not a prime. The trouble is if a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, p still might not be prime. So if, if we take p equals 5, 6, 1, this is the famous Carmichael number, or the first Carmichael number, then um, p is equal to 3 times 11 times 17. And, and we saw earlier that a to the 5, 6, 1 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod you know, 5, 6, 1, whenever a is co-prime to 5, 6, 1. So this, this primality test breaks down for some Carmichael numbers. However, using the Jacobi symbol, we can do better because um, if p is prime, then um, a p 
is congruent to minus um, is, is congruent to a to the p minus 1 over 2 modulo p. And now we can work out this fast using um, Russian exponentiation, Russian peasant uh, method for doing exponentiation. And we can work out this fast using the fact that it's a Jacobi symbol. Um, Notice we need to use Jacobi symbols rather than Legendre symbols in order to get a fast algorithm for working this out, because if we restrict ourselves to Legendre symbols, we would have to factorise um, various numbers, and this would be very, very slow. So, for example, we can now show that 561 is not prime um, by, um, say, taking a equals 5, and then we find um, 5 um, 5, 6, 1 is not congruent to 5 to the power of 280 mod um, 5, 6, 1. So that's 5, 6, 1 minus 1 over 2. And that's because we can calculate this because it's 5, 6, 1, 5 um, using the quadratic reciprocity theorem, which is 1, 5 by dividing, which is equal to plus 1. And on the other hand, 5 to the power of 280 turns out to be congruent to 67 modulo 561. So there are two ways to calculate this. You can either do it honestly by using the Russian peasant method of calculating it, which takes a lot of time, or what I actually did was I cheated. What you do is you just have to check that these are equal modulo all the factors of 561, which are 3, 11, and 17. And you can see that this is um, minus 1 modulo 17 and it's plus 1 modulo 3 and 11. But of course, that's kind of cheating because we're using the fact we already know this isn't prime. But but anyway, so, so that gives you um, a fast primality test, which is a little bit better than the than the test just using Fermat's theorem, and so it fails less often. Um, there's a bit of a problem with the definition of the, 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 the Jacobi symbol. We notice the definition is a bit of a mess. So we first define a p, the p prime, to be plus 1 if a is a square and so on. And then we define a p for, um, for a b for b not a prime just by saying it's a, a, a product of um, these various numbers. And this definition is frankly a bit of a mess. Um, you know, we, we, we're using we're defining it in two completely different steps that have very little to do with each other. And we can ask, is there a one-step definition of the Jacobi symbol A, B, that works for all B without having to divide into cases when B is a prime or not a prime? And the answer is yes, it's due to Zolotorov. Um, what he did was he showed that um, a p, so a b, for all b, is equal to the sign of the permutation of multiplication by a on the integers modulo b z. So I'll now explain what this means. Well, first of all, a permutation is, is, is ju just means a bijection from a set to itself. And we notice that if we take z modulo bz and multiply by a and map it to z modulo bz, then this is a bijection provided a and b are co-prime. Um, I should say that the, 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 this definition only works for a, b um, co-prime. If a and b um, is greater than one, then the symbol a, b is equal to zero. Um, so now what do we mean by the sign of a permutation? So suppose we've got a permutation sigma, and suppose it acts on a set S, which maybe has elements S1, S2, and so on. So what we do is we pretend these elements of S are variables, and we form the following product. We form the product delta, which is the product over i less than j of Si minus Sj. So it's sort of S1 minus S2, 
s1 minus s3, s2 minus s3, and so on. And then we can check that sigma acts on delta by acting on all the variables, and this is obviously going to be either plus or minus delta because it's going to be the product over all pairs of variables si and sj of, of their difference. So, so we get all pairs si minus sj, except we might have sj minus si, so it's, it would be the other way around. Um, and this sign here is called the sign of the permutation um, sigma. So, so, so let's work out an example. Suppose that sigma takes swaps S1 and S2 and maps S3 to itself. So we take delta, which is now going to be S1 minus S2, S1 minus S3 times S2 minus S3, and sigma of delta is going to be, well, we just swap 1 and 2. So it's S2 minus S1 times S2 minus S3 times S1 minus S3. And now if you look, we've got the same three factors. We've got this factor and this factor and this factor. So we've swapped these two factors. And this one we've changed sign. So we've got a minus 1 here. So sigma of delta is equal to minus delta. So epsilon of sigma is equal to minus 1, and sigma is an, called an odd permutation. So, so we say the permutation is even or odd, depending whether it changes delta to plus delta or minus delta. So um, Zolotorov showed that a b is equal to epsilon of a, where this means Multi the permutation multiplication by a on z modulo bz. So let's check that this is true. First of all, we have to check it when b is equal to a prime. And now um, both sides are multiplicative. So, so it's enough to check that um, gb is equal to epsilon g, with g being a primitive root of um, of uh, b, which is which is now prime, so it has a primitive root, and that's because if g b is equal to epsilon g, then g to the i b will be equal to epsilon g to the i, because both sides are multiplicative, um, and for g a primitive root, we know that g b is equal to minus 1 because primitive roots are not squares so this is just minus 1 to the b minus 1 over 2 mod b which is equal to minus so it's so it's equal to g to the b minus 1 over 2 mod b which is minus 1 because g is a primitive root um, on the other hand we need to know what what does the permutation g look like on the integers mod b and the integers mod b look like this they look like 0 g to the 0, g to the 1, up to g to the b minus 1. And multiplication by a, or by g, looks like this. First of all, it obviously takes 0 to itself, and then it just maps all these variables around in a big cycle. And this is a cycle of even length. And a cycle of even length is an odd permutation, as you can check fairly easily. It's very annoying um, that cycles of even length are odd permutations and cycles of odd length are even permutations, but there's nothing we can do about it. Anyway, so this means that psilon g is equal to minus 1 if g is a primitive root, so this is equal to g b. So this verifies um, that Zolotar's definition in the case that the denominator is prime. Now we need to check what happens if um, the denominator is not prime. I'm just going to do the case of two primes um, to simplify notation. The case of several primes is, is um, um, pretty similar, except you can just you know you can just take these to be two odd numbers. So so let's let's just do this for p and q primes to give the main idea um, and so we have two permutations let's put sigma is multiplication 
by A on the set Z modulo PZ. And tau is multiplication by A on the set Z modulo QZ. So, so we have A P is just the sign of sigma and A Q is just the sign of tau. And um, now um, we use the Chinese remainder theorem. We notice that Z modulo PQZ can be written can be identified with the product of the set Z modulo PZ times Z modulo QZ. And here we've got this permutation sigma, which is multiplication by A, tau, which is multiplication by B. And on this, we've now got the permut on, on, on this set here, we sorry, it's not multiplication by B, it's multiplication by A again. Um, and now on this set, we've got the, per the permutation sigma times tau, because whenever we've got a permutation sigma on a set and a permutation tau on another set, we obviously get a, a, a sort of product permutation on the product of the two sets. And this permutation sigma times tau just corresponds to multiplication by A on the set Z modulo PQZ. So um, we just want to check that the sine of sigma times tau is equal to the sine of sigma times the sine of tau. And you may sort of think this is obvious, but there's actually a subtle trap here. Um, so, so warning. Suppose sigma is a permutation of x and tau is a permutation of a set y then epsilon of sigma times tau is not equal to um, the, the sine of sigma um, times the sine of tau in general. So here this is a permutation of x times y. And it's quite easy to find examples of this. So we could just take x to be a two-point set and y to be a two-point set. So this is going to be x, and this is going to be y, and x times y is going to look like that. And let's take sigma to be this permutation here. And let's take tau just to be permutation that maps everything to itself. So, so tau is 1 on y. And then we see that the, the, the sine of, sorry, that should be a tau. The sine of tau is just plus 1. And the sine of sigma is minus 1 because it just swaps two points of x. But the sine of sigma times tau, well, sigma times tau swaps these two points and this, these two points. So it's, it's an even permutation. So, so um, we wanted this formula here in order to finish our proof of Zolotar's result, but this isn't actually true for all permutations. So what is the correct result? Well, again, we take sigma is a permutation of x and tau is a permutation of y. So sigma times tau is a permutation of x times y. And the sine of sigma times tau is the sine of sigma times the sine of tau. Well, I just said it wasn't that, so obviously I've got to fix something. Well, it's actually the sine of sigma times the size of y times epsilon tau times the size of x. And um, the reason for that is we can just look at sigma on x times y. So um, here, we, here we've got a set x. And here we've got a set y. And if we've got a permutation sigma on x, so sigma might do something like this, then sigma on x times y has y copies of sigma on x. So epsilon of sigma on x times y is the, the, the sine of sigma on x to the power of the size of y. And this permutation here is um, sigma times t 
tau is just sigma on x times y, meaning we, we, we have sigma acting on the first coordinate of x times tau on x times y. So that proves this formula here. Well, now if we go back, um, we wanted to show that when x is the integers modulo pz and y is the integers modulo qz, we want um, sigma, so epsilon sigma, epsilon sigma times tau is equal to epsilon of sigma times epsilon of tau. Well, in fact, epsilon of sigma times tau is equal to epsilon of, of, of sigma to the size of y times epsilon of tau to the size of x. However, x equals y, so x, y are both odd because p and q are odd. So we're okay because epsilon of sigma to the y is equal to epsilon of sigma and epsilon of tau the x is equal to epsilon of tau. So um, um, this formula that we needed was OK because p and q are both odd, um, if um, are odd numbers. Um, there's another thing you've got to be a little bit careful of. And so we have another warning. So that a b is equal to the sine of a on z modulo b z. It is not, in general, the sine of a on z modulo b z star. The 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 um elements the b at the co-prime to a and if you try defining it like this everything just goes wrong um, um, th 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 this th th this is true if b is prime but not um, in general um, um, so um, So that, that, that's um, a summary of the Jacobi symbol. In the next lecture, I'll say a little bit about a further generalization of the Jacobi symbol, um, um, which is the Kronecker symbol. And by, by the way, I should also just mention that um, Zolotorov used his definition to give another proof of the law of quadratic reciprocity. But since we've already had two proofs, I don't think we need a third.